ladies and gentlemen, for our final award for tonight. At this year's Oscars, Brendan Fraser made an more important and emotional speech while receiving the Best Actor Award for his superb role in a film called The Whale. Our next winner may not be this emotional despite being a Ludhiana-born Punjabi, but he is certainly the predominant actor in the India story stage. He is a survivor in an industry that can get its signals crossed and even lost. At the forefront of the 5G rollout, his was the first telecom company to launch the next-gen broadband service last October. He has also been at the center of the furious pace and reach of the digital age of India. This is one man who is proof of the saying, what does not kill you only makes you stronger. Ladies and gentlemen, please let's have a huge round of applause for Bharti Enterprises chairman and legend, Sunil Bharti Mittal, ET Business Leader of the Year. Minister, Union Minister Manaviya Ji, Honorable Chief Minister Shinde Ji, my industry colleagues, friends, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great honor for me to once again stand on this stage and receive an award which was given to me 18 years back in 2005. And as I was looking at the list of all the awards, I was running through the times when my company, in one form or shape, came up here to receive that award, starting with the Emerging Company of the Year, the Entrepreneur of the Year, the Company of the Year, the Corporate Citizen of the Year, and now again, once more, you know, getting the Business Leader Award of the Year. One award which many is still left is the Lifetime Achievement, and I'm so glad that uh, Roshni is here to receive that award on behalf of our very dear friendship. But I tell you, uh, when I was coming to receive this award, what was running in my mind was that there are perhaps better ways to get this award than to go through a crisis every time to come back here on this stage. <laughs> and this time you have also ensured that I get it at the Geo Center. Eighteen years is a long time. Today I have more years to look back than look forward. At 65, coming close to 66, it's been a long journey. And many of my friends know, but for some of our distinguished leaders here tonight, you'll be very pleased to know, and I'd like to share with you, my father was a full-time politician. Uh, he passed away very young. He was 60 years when he passed away in 1992. And uh, as normally is the process, most of the political families do come into active politics in the next generation as well. Some of us were politically inclined. Rajan is here with me today, my brother. And we came in a very active political family. And uh, it was my mother who said, no way you're going to go into politics. And I can confess that I was not as elegantly and well-educated and many of my colleagues. I, with great difficulty, had done my graduation in 76. At a young age of 18, I had rolled my dice to hopefully create something. I was on a journey not knowing where my destination was. But two or three years before my father passed away, he was not keeping good health. He said, I can see the journey you're on. You're working hard. You are committed. You're passionate. I foresee a good future for you. Well, it'd be really nice if a politician's son can go and create a global corporation. And I tell you today, when I come and receive this award, I can tell you there is one big reason for it. That is his blessings, of course, but importantly, getting trained in a political family, where almost every day there are shifts uh, and movements where there are 
things happening that you don't anticipate, you go through crisis after crisis, and I think that possibly is one reason why we could come through multiple crises. 2003, when I got the award in 2005, 2008, 9, when we got the Company of the Year award, and today, as I stand here in 2023, we came through another very, very big tsunami or a hurricane, whatever you may call it. Uh, Nirmala Ji, I would like to say that this award, while it represents me as the business leader of the year, it really is for the company. It is an award for Airtel. And I, what is Airtel? What does it represent? It represents a very unique story that in this country, you can start with 20,000 rupees as a young college graduate and go and create a global powerhouse. Today, Airtel is the second largest mobile company in the world. And that is, of course, due to a lot of work done by thousands of people. But more importantly, the main reason is that it is this country that provides such opportunities to people who come from absolutely nowhere. Nitin has come up and picked up an award here today. He's created a wonderful company, and I see these stories coming through all the time. And in the last 18 years, this has only picked up massive acceleration. There is so much momentum in this country. I have grown up and watched various phases of socialism, moving from socialism to somewhat of opening up. 1992, when everything seemed to be lost, or rather 91, when ushering of reforms happened, the famous uh, 92 reforms. I went through that phase, and then many other phases. But what happened under Honorable Prime Minister Modiji's time from 2014 is unprecedented. The last eight, nine years have really changed this country from a country that you represented as a developing country, from a country that you represented across the globe in various foras, as a country which was struggling on many fronts, to today when you go around the globe, to be one of the most powerful countries in the world has become a huge shift in how India is seen across the globe. You were in Washington, D.C. at the same time, just 10 days back, I was there as well. And I can tell you the way American leadership now looks at India and treats India is significantly different from where we were just about 10 years back also. That, to my mind, is the power that this country gives to people like us, entrepreneurs like us, to deliver and deliver every day at scale that is unprecedented in the world. Amitabh spoke about digital, you mentioned digital, and uh, Mandavia ji spoke about health and digital. During COVID time, this industry, not for a moment or a single day, let this country down. The traffic moved from urban to rural areas, traffic moved from offices to homes, not one day this industry let heartbeat stop of this country. They served day in and day out. And today, as the country is uh, progressing forward, it is on one of the most important pillars of digital. And that digital dream of India rests on a handful of companies. And all I would urge you, uh, on behalf of the entire industry, to continue to nourish and nurture it. I mentioned in my interview with the Economic Times, and I'll end by saying, asking a question, who does Airtel belong to? If during this last round, when many companies have actually gone away, uh, Uday spoke about consolidation. In our case, um, Uday, there was no consolidation. There was only inhalation. It was just company after company disappearing. Customers kept their faith. More customers joined us, which gave me the hope that we are doing something right. Airtel employees, Thousands of them were out on scooters in scorching heat to fight in the marketplace and ensure that the customers are staying with us, more customers are coming with us. They kept the faith, they stayed the course. And then investors, when they saw fires engulfing this industry, they came and poured billions of dollars into Airtel. They doused the fires. They gave us the strength in our balance sheet to move forward. And when a bolt from the blue came from the Supreme Court in the form of an AGR penalty, not a 500 crore, not a 5,000 crores, but a 50,000 crore penalty, an unheard of penalty, the government stepped up. They gave the helping hand, quickly moved a cabinet uh, proposal to ensure that this industry, the players in the industry survive. The path-breaking reforms of 2021, to my mind, 
make a big difference to the industry and importantly gave a signal when things will really go down, the government will come and step up and ensure that they support the industry that is so vital to this country. So who does this company belong to? Its employees, its customers, its investors, or the government? My simple answer is, this is a national asset. Airtel is not my company. I had the privilege of founding it. And today I stand here uh, to take this award. I have the privilege to be at the helm of this company. But honorable finance minister, this is truly a national asset which needs to be nurtured. This needs to be a story that inspires thousands of more entrepreneurs in this country to create the magic that Airtel has been able to create. Thank you very much.